Hey guys, welcome back to Primer Podcast. Back this week with Pete. Um, so right in the middle of bless your heart. And so this week is all about food and eating. That's right. Eat. The yes, e. that's right. So I know my you favorite love to eat. Yes, absolutely. Um, and I feel like you're pretty picky. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. so, um, so you, I know you talk a lot about like different restaurants and stuff. Oh yeah. So I was thinking this week about all of the different meals I've had in the last week. I had like chili on the front porch with neighbors on Halloween. Brittany and I had a date night at a restaurant in Greensboro. Uh, I went to Chili's with a group of uh, guy friends of mine. Uh, we had our Friendsgiving where we served turkey for 20 in the backyard. It, it's been a, a busy eating week yeah. for me. So yeah. it's been a lot of fun. So yeah. yes, but uh, definitely love eating. Yeah. Um, but also really love the the idea of how eating and the gospel message are paired together mm-hmm. um, so frequently within within scripture. So we're we're looking at the book of Luke this week, and and in Luke, Jesus has a a meal on ten different occasions. So we see Jesus eating with others. 10 different times. So what are, what are some of those meals that come to your mind right when you think about Jesus and eating? What's the what are the first ones that that crop up for you? Um gosh, probably um where Levi comes in. Okay, yes. Yeah. Um, eating with the tax eating with the, top and the sinners. tax collectors and then the Pharisees come by and, yeah. and ask him, you know, why would you eat <clears throat> with those that are are uh, tax collectors and sinners and um then I think the wedding. Yeah, the wedding feast uh, at Cana. Mm-hmm. First and, miracle. Yeah, and then gosh, I mean, there's so so many yeah. times like it, like the Last like, Supper, the Last Supper, feeding the, of five thousand. Yep, yeah, the meal with uh, Matthew. Yeah, 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 exactly. So uh, um, it's it's interesting because these these meals, you know, are are throughout, and and each one has this this kind of different lesson, and there's this kind of powerful combination, and I don't think it's accidental, right? It, it, you see in 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 Luke that that Last Supper, Jesus, it, it, I love the line. It says, "I'm e- I've been eager to share this meal with you before I suffer." Mm-hmm. Right? There's this picture of like <clears throat> when we eat together, it's not just about physical nourishment; it's about the spiritual nourishment. And in fact, Jesus takes that meal together. And he says, this meal together is is an embodiment of what's about to happen on the cross. Anytime you take of this bread, do so in remembrance of me, right? It's this this picture of of every time you share this meal, you're reminded of, of your need for a savior. It's like this pairing of physical nourishment with spiritual nourishment as well. Uh, but one of the things I've been wrestling with this week, uh, and this week in particular, with with many of the uh, conversations that are going ar- around the, the the election cycle and all that, is is Jesus's propensity to eat with people that don't necessarily think like him, mm. um, and it's one that I think we ignore. So there are three different times in the Gospel of Luke that Jesus eats with the Pharisees. Yeah. Right, and and I think that's interesting. We skip that uh, pretty quickly. So uh, in in uh, Luke seven thirty six, it says, "When one of the Pharisees invited Jesus to have dinner with him, he went to the Pharisee's house and reclined at the table." So, what do you think about when I say Jesus is eating meals with with Pharisees? Mm. Like, why would that be shocking? Why would that be odd? Well, I think because he. <clears throat> Um, reprimands the Pharisees so yep. much for being so rigid. Yeah, and so, um, so I think we we well, one I think I tend to um, look at Matthew and Levi that are um, not not perfect. Yeah, in in the world standards. Yeah, and so I I tend to look at that rather than look at the Pharisees. Yeah, because the Pharisees are the ones that are. Right, and their world standards are the ones that are getting yeah. it all all right. Well, and Jesus is reprimanding the Pharisees in in a number of spaces, and he's he's teaching them and trying to open up their 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 worldview. But also, 
the Pharisees are reprimanding Jesus yeah. over yeah. and over. They're like they have made it their goal to cause Jesus to stumble, uh, to to trip him up, and ultimately it's the Pharisees that stir up the people to send Jesus to the cross, and Jesus knows that, mm -hmm. right? He's not he he's not uh, you know thinking, hey, these guys are going to become my best friends, and yet he's taking this time to eat with them and to sit with them and to spend time with them. And I think that's a challenge for us uh, in in our our faith um, and in our culture is that that we spend a lot of time eating with our friends, mm -hmm. eating with our family, right? And that's good. That uh, you know, it, it it's really important. Meals together uh, equip us to do things that we, we we otherwise might not have the courage to do. Right. I think we we may not do it as regularly, but we're open to the idea of eating with those. Um, that that maybe would benefit from from our relationship with them, or maybe are eager to eat with us, and it feels a little bit inconvenient. You know, I, I talk about how we we oftentimes have neighbors where um, where they don't have the kind of community that we have, and they long for it. Uh, and we have the choice as Christians to either keep the door to our community closed and comfortable or open the door and invite others in that, that are genuinely desiring to come in, right? That's Jesus yeah. with the tax collectors. You know, have they repented? Have they changed their lives? Have they fixed everything? Right. No. no. But are they eager to be in the presence of Jesus? Yes. And so Jesus embraced them, accepts them. And I think we as a church do a pretty good job with that. But then to see Jesus go and engage with those that that have denied him, mm -hmm. that have rejected him, that are actively working to betray him and send him to the cross. It's a harder conversation. It's a harder conversation. Yeah. It's not a conversation that we tend to have in our culture. And I, I think what's really powerful too is in the ancient world, you know, a meal together meant something, right? Mm -hmm. It was an affirmation of our relationship. It was an affirmation of our respect for someone else. And um, and and I just think that that is is lost in our culture is that we kind of have this this feeling of you know I'll eat with my friends I'll eat with those that want to eat with me I'll eat with those that agree with me that think like me uh, but if you're not if you're the enemy if you're the other side like good riddance yeah you know yeah I, I know I tend to like um, I can become awkward in conversation with somebody else that's either um, maybe conflicting with some of my yeah. ideas like yeah. i get to the point where i'm kind of like okay you know building a wall up in yeah. between me and that person or if if they're more silent yeah like it's it's hard at some point it's like it's hard to come up with conversation so yeah. like it it takes more of an effort to have those conversations with people that are um not in our circle yeah but um to 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 realize that it's still just as important to have meals with them and right. conversations with them, coffee. Yeah. And, um, and, and it's probably not going to be the first time. Yeah. It's not going to be the best time. The next invitation may be right. May, may have the opportunity to come into a better yeah. conversation at that point. Well, it's really, we talked about intention a lot last week and it's really important to recognize what is our intention of that meal? And I think that meal becomes that way when our intention is to convince somebody, when our intention is to, to beat somebody over the head with our thoughts and our ideologies or our politics. Um, but instead, what I love about this, this you know, kind of this blessed movement of, of actively seeking to love our neighbor, actively seeking to love our enemy, is that our eating is the canvas for our listening. Mm. Right. So this is just an opportunity. I'm opening a door to listen to someone else, either by having them in my home or going into their home and eating with them. And that's a disarming, you know, kind of invitation. Right. It's like, hey, if we're going to sit down at the dinner table first, we got to set our swords down right at the right. door, you know. Um, and, and and I think when we come with a posture of listening, it always is going to present opportunities to build relationship. It's always going to uh, offer us opportunities to to create connections with each other. And ultimately, what do those connections do? They remind us of the gospel message, mm -hmm. that, that, that we're drawn into a remembrance of what Jesus does on the cross for us, and then the way that we surrender to others. And so, I, I you know, I think this week in our, in our BLESS series, as we're thinking about who am I praying for right now? Who am I listening to right now? Who am I eating with? Like, Perhaps the place to start is the neighbor whose yard signs don't align with yours, mm. right? And that's a hard invitation, and it's one that 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 leads us to say, uh, 
Isn't there something easier to do? And yet, I think that's embodying the gospel in the way that we see Jesus embodying the gospel, in the way that we see Jesus laying down his life for those that he shares a meal with, um, is this recognition that the kingdom of God is so much bigger than the kingdoms of this world. And, and if we really believe that, then it can join us together with 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 our neighbor, with our, our enemy uh, ac- across the table. Um, and I think that could be really cool. Yeah, thanks, so, Sandra. So, guys, we hope that um, you're enjoying this series and um, getting into some um, great conversations with your groups. And hopefully you'll um, think about who it is that you're praying for and hopefully in the next few weeks get to have a meal with them. We'll see you next week. See you soon.